everyone. Welcome to the Soka Mom Summit. I am so excited to have you here with us. And I am very excited to have Nicola Mitchell here with us. Now, we have not been on screen together for what, seven years now? It's been at least, seven probably at years. least seven years. I just said that. Seven years. Yeah, it's been a while and I missed you. So I'm looking forward to this conversation. I miss you too. So we are going to be talking about how to turn your mission into a movement, which is really, really important right now, okay. especially because we have unrest like we've never seen. We have worldwide protests. Right. We have a pandemic. All of this stuff is happening mm -hmm. at the same time. And it's laying bare a lot of problems that we just don't pay attention to, right? The first thing that people were talking about was what's going to happen with domestic violence victims who have to stay home. Right. But with school disrupted and all of those things, there's a lot of other stuff that mm -hmm. came up. So you may see a need and you're wondering, what do I do? What do I do next? And Nicola is here to inspire you, to tell her story, to tell what she did to start her movement. So please introduce yourself to everyone. Hello everyone, my name is Nicola Mitchell. I am a writer, I am a publisher, and I'm also the founder of Girls Who Brunch Tour. With Girls Who Brunch, we take girls ages 9 through 17 and we give them a girl empowerment conference. We take girls who are at risk, girls who are in group home, girls who are in foster care, girls who have been rescued from the sex trade, and we team them up with girls who are from a better circumstance and let them learn what unity, sisterhood, and friendship is. We teach them STEM. We teach them self-esteem. We teach them um, human trafficking awareness, and we just let them have fun at the same time. So as of date, we are we have serviced 8,000 girls in 21 cities across country, and we've been in existence for five years. That is fantastic. That is such an amazing mission to have all the girls aware of what's happening. So right. that is so, so important. Can you tell me what it was that happened that made you say, I'm doing this? Because you have a full career, right? Probably several careers, several times over. So <laughs> it's not like you were bored, like you didn't have anything to do and you're like, hmm, what can I do with my time? You didn't really have time. You know, you've got, you're a mom, you know, so you've got a lot of stuff to do. Right. What is it that made you say, that's it, I'm doing it? Um, it was a couple of factors. Um, first, I, I was an at-risk kid. I had my first child when I was 15, five days after my 15th birthday. I was raped four times before the age of 16, um, the first time by my choir director, which is what led me to have sex, um, you know, because I felt in my 14-year-old mind, I thought that was going to make everything go away and be normal. Um, so I was that kid, you know, the girl that, people wrote off because she had a baby, the girl that people stated, oh, she's not going to be anyone. I was her. So I had to prove everybody wrong. And there was someone that believed in me, Dr. Sullivan from the Upper Bound Program in Las Vegas, who did not give up on me and was like, no matter that your circumstance, you have this baby, you're going to go to college, you're going to be somebody. And so I felt, I always told myself, no matter what, I was always going to give back and things like that. So when I wrote my first book, I used to try to do things before that and no one took me serious. Once I started doing things as a writer, I start being able to have access to different type of situations as women in group, um, in homeless shelters, girl, women in group homes. But I never 
still took that on as a serious full-time manner. So um, I told myself, you know, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to see girls. I'm going to, you know, take on girls, but I never had the time. In 2016, I was pregnant. I was seven months pregnant and my son died. I um, lost the baby and then my mother died two weeks later. And so that was just like one of those things that's like, you know what, life is too short. And then um, a month later, I went to Charleston, South Carolina, and I um, was hosted by this book club for their retreat. And there was a book signing in Barnes and Nobles, and there was an organization that brought girls in from the Gullah Islands. And those babies never even knew in 2017 at that time, 2016, that pizza came in the box. So wow. I was like, okay, this is crazy, you know? So I kept saying, yeah, I'm going to come back. I kept, kept saying, I'm going to do this girls event. I'm going to come back. And the rest is history. I went back to Charleston. I met up with that organization. And I, I met someone from the school board. I met all these people in just like this one city. I got connected with the school, which was across the street from a community center. And I didn't even have a name. I'm like, okay, we had a date. I didn't even really have a format of an event. So I took what one of my book launches would be and um, <laughs> just added on uh, classes. And that's where it was birthed. So from there, that first event, um, we I was only added three cities to my tour, my regular book tour. And when you make plans for yourself, God laughs at you and um, <laughs> tells you that he has the complete control. And in that first year, we end up having nine cities that we um, went to. Um, that first event, we had over 250 girls there. So I wasn't prepared for that. I was like, whoa, OK. And because I've been in the business with marketing and branding and things, even though we didn't have an event, I was pushing it. So I was getting the momentum up. So we were going to different cities and they were like, oh my gosh, I want you to come here. Can you come here? Can you come here? And we we just start going everywhere. And being there, I've learned that the, what I thought was a problem for me, these kids have been going through way, 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 way more than me. So it's, it's taught me and it made me I, I still write books. I'm still a, a, a publisher. I still have clients, but my main goal and purpose has been Girls Who Brunch. With that time being so hard for you, how did you find the energy, the emotions to give to at-risk girls? Because that's a lot. You know, the stories are a lot to process. You know, I'm sure some of them took you back to your youth, which is yeah. difficult for people under reasonable circumstances. So right. in your circumstances, I know it was very difficult to hear some of those stories. Mm -hmm. How did you find the strength to do that, to take on this huge project? Well, you know, when you first walk in, these girls don't know who you are. They're like, oh, she looks pretty. But so, you know, I walk in and I do carry myself so people know I'm somebody. They just don't know who I am, you know. So while they're having fun, I'm dancing with them. I'm doing whatever. When they introduce me, um, someone reads my bio and it shows like this profound person, all these awards. Um, black enterprise, you know, things like that. And they're like, oh, who is this lady? But then once they introduce me, I speak and I'm like, look, I was you. I have been raped. I've been this. And it's been actually therapeutic for me because a lot of that I kept inside. Um, I went to counseling and therapy and I thought that I was fixing it. But really, um, since this movement has started, every time I get up and I share my story, that chips away a little bit more of that hurt that I've been carrying for all these years. So me expressing myself allows some of these quiet, hard shell kids to be able to express there. And I also do our panel discussions as a fishbowl setting that's anonymous. So we have someone collect their questions. They don't, we don't know who wrote that question. So that's what as well makes it easier for them to be as vulnerable 
as they are because here I am being vulnerable, you know, and I look like I have it together. So they tend to be vulnerable with the questions. And so I think it's more of a healing process for both of us, for everybody involved, because I have professionals in that city. So it's not just me doing it. I left that part out. I bring in the who's who of women and girls in their community. And so we're all like loving on and helping each other. There have been so many cities that these women are professionals, lawyers, council women, <laughs> celebrities, and they're on that stage when they're speaking. Oh, I was raped. Oh, this happened to me. Oh, I was beat. And so it's just like that helps us to like heal each other. And I feel like um, when these girls are seeing women who are queens and their and people they look up to in their own right, being vulnerable and able to express themselves, that you know that's the most powerful moment of the event. I love that seeing these women takes away some of the barriers in yeah. the girls' minds. That is so powerful to have these women who have had similar experiences and have been able to achieve. They've been able to overcome because yeah. in an abusive situation, they have to make you feel like you're nothing. Yeah. And to see people who have really, really just kind of work through their circumstances and who are willing to come back. I mean, that's a lot and it's very, very powerful. And I know they appreciate you for that. Yeah. When you get home at night from one of those events, you've packed mm -hmm. up everything, the banners, the, you know, leftover gift bags, if there are any, mm -hmm. how do you feel about your day? What is your first thought when you take off those heels or sneakers and heels sit down? The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like full. You know, it's like I'll do a good, bad, and ugly analysis with myself because even though these are children, I still want them to feel like this is a celebrity event for them. We have a red carpet. We have a beauty lounge where that we have beauty services being performed on them. We have a chicken and waffle brunch. We have a dessert station. We have decor. We have linen. You know, I roll out the whole red carpet for them because they are going to be, they're celebrities in their own right that day. And um, by the time I go home, I'm more like, okay, did this go wrong? Or, you know, to what can we do to make this better? Okay, we're going back to Charlotte. We got to make sure Charlotte is good. We, it's not the same thing. Because if the same girls came the last time, every time you come, it doesn't matter if you come every year. It's just a different experience. And so that's what I go home. It makes me happy to know like these girls are here and they're opening up. And I've had so many come to me directly like, look, I need you to answer this question. You know, and I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you know, it's, I just feel full. That's the only way I can explain it is just feeling full. When we talked about everything up to this point, we've talked about the problem. We've talked mm -hmm. about where the passion comes from. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about what your mission is and how you discovered that. Because it's one thing to say, these are the things that I want to do, right? But mm -hmm. what is it that is your mission that is going to change them? It's one thing to say, I'm going to give them a beautiful experience for a day, what is your mission with these young ladies? My main mission is to inspire, cultivate, and empower girls ages 9 through 17. I want them to learn. Like, once we leave, the other thing is, when, while I'm bringing the who's who of that community, I'm bringing other nonprofit organizations that are on ground there. I'm bringing other organizations and churches and things like that that are on ground there. So I'm starting it off, but I'm giving you guys 250 to 300 girls every time that you may not have access to to continue to, your, to serve your movement with you know so I want when they leave they're they're just as full as me I want when they leave they've learned something we have all our workshops are steam related um we we um they get prizes so okay so when they come I give them raffle tickets and they have to dance for their prize and with that 
that's making them have to be um, get outside their box and speak to somebody because you may be nervous or scared to come to the front, but somebody else may come dance for you. So we make them do that as as friends. And you and when they go to class or sessions, whoever they came with, they can't go to those sessions together. And they're broken down by age. And then they come out and they get applauded when they're walking in because it takes courage to leave your who you came with. That's your comfort zone, your parents, the organizations that brought you and to go step out by yourself. So we applaud them to come back in. But then um, we also give them award them for knowing what they learned, you know, to be able to tell us what they learned. They have to know their instructor's name. They have to know the name of the class and at least one thing that they learned. And. So I have like 25, 50 gifts in every get in every city. So they're learning so much, but they're having fun learning at the same time. And I think I have more girls that st- come to the front and raise their hands who want to, who win prizes off of what they learned than off of dancing. And that's just the best feeling as well. So it's like, at first I used to feel frustrated. because I'm like, dang, all right, we're leaving. We need to do more. Right. But I had to really start taking heat like, man, in them four hours, these chicks learned a lot. You know, (laughs) they came out learning more stuff that they did not know. And they're telling you they're like, no, sis, this is what I learned. No, this is what it is. Even little kids, we talking about Internet safety and things. Oh, yeah, you don't do this. You don't do that. That's the best feeling in the world, just knowing that we've taught them something that sometimes they go to school and don't even comprehend in the six to eight weeks class session they may have you know or the whole school year we we gave them that in four hours and um we have other events once a quarter that's continuing with just one-on-one workshops to allow them to have that girls who brunch tour experience on a smaller level throughout the year what i heard that was really interesting to me is that you bring along other organizations Mm -hmm. who have, they have things that are aligned with what you're doing and the Mm -hmm. audiences that they want to serve are similar. Mm -hmm. I also heard that you have the girls help each other and kind of branch out and do their own version of networking. So you're, kind of showing them what it's like to be able to connect with other people so that Mm -hmm. when it's time for them to have a movement that they want to get started, they know that they need other people, that they need partnerships. And then you're showing them by doing. You have partnerships in the community and you share your resources. And I think that is fantastic. Tell me, what it was at the beginning that let you know that you can't do this by yourself when you were coming up with the idea and you're seeing how big this could really be. What was it that says, okay, first thing I've got to do is go get some help. Well, that was always number one. Cause like, dang, we're going to do it. How many cities? (laughs) So in every city we have a committee chair. And our committee chairs tend to be leaders of different organizations. So like an example, in Indianapolis, we have six committee chairs, right? Um, Demetria, she own, she's the founder of Rossi. Um, that's a nonprofit. LaVon, she's a, she's, um, a founder of we, we, we Are Hype. Um, just Miss Marta's a police officer, and she's a motivational speaker. Like, we have all these great women that have their own movements, as you know, but they still work for me, per se, because I'm working for them. So I knew that from jump, I needed to have a team of women involved for planning for each city, but then also with the implementing. So for six workshops, I can't teach six, six sessions at one time. And that's how many children we have. We're breaking them down into three classes um, by age groups, but two a piece per session. And I can't do that. So most of our instructors are founders, um, coders, you know, people who have their own 
thing going and they're bringing their girls in. So now their girls is fellowshipping with your girls and you guys find out you guys do the same thing. So now there may be some group activities that you're doing later on. But I always knew that. I always knew that when it came for me as to become Nicola um, and to have touched as many people as I've done in the book world, I couldn't do it alone. So I just used those same tactics with Girls Who Brunch. So you were able to bring your professional experience to Girls Who Brunch. And my Rolodex of clients and friends. See. Sis, I'm coming to DC. You want to speak? <laughs> See. If you find yourself in Chicago, I please will, let me I know. I will be in Chicago <laughs> in October and you could be on the lineup, girl. See, yes. you just got to let me know. Yeah. So you've made it into a movement. You've got fans. You've got super fans. You've got the girls talking about it. You've got their families and their friends talking about it. Yeah. What do you do next? Is there any idea that is too big when it comes to a movement? We've been watching the Black Lives Matter movement and it started with just one thing, just one protest and then mushroomed for the whole world because you find out that your problem is much Everybody. bigger than you ever thought it was. Do you see this as a global idea? Is there anything stopping you from making this a global movement like Black Lives Matter? The only thing that's low key stopping me is funding, but I've never had funding. From the very first event, I never had a budget. I never had funding. I just created and by the time the event takes place, everything is paid for. So I, I I know God has me with that, right? And I'm from Jamaica, so you know you're saying how to make fashion, you know? So <laughs> I know like what to do to make it happen. And um, it's crazy and I'm just smiling while you're just saying Black Lives Matter because Patrice, um, like again, Nicola, you know, I'm just the girls who brunch tour lady now, but Nicola's really a writer and literary consultant in my own, in my real life. And so I uh, put together events. And so I was bringing in Patrice for an event in Indianapolis that was, that was canceled. And so in this process, getting to know her outside of um, Black Lives Black, the excuse me, Black Lives Matter lady on TV, I was like, wow, you know, so I actually just emailed her this morning. And I was like, sis, I hope your mental and physical is good. I'm going to continue to pray for you. And I'm proud of you because to see that they put Black Lives Matter um, Parkway where the president resides, that was like the biggest thing for me. And I was like, I am so, 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 so proud of you. And I, and I felt that moment when I was just sending that message to her and when they responded and she was like, you know, thank you for the kind words. She's so overwhelmed with things that's going on right now. So I, I was like, I don't even need a lot of time. I just wanted to tell you that. And it just was like, dang, this was just one thing. She didn't know it was going to explode into this. And that's how I feel about Girls Who Brunch. I do see it being global. I'm from Jamaica. So, of course, if I'm doing this for American children, I definitely want to do it for Caribbean, for Hispanic, for um, African uh, European all over the world and I can see it happening we're just as great as girl, uh, girl Scouts of America as St. Jude's we do the same type of work you know make a wish we work that hard just like that so I don't see that it cannot happen you know the Bible says prayer without work is dead so as long as, long as I'm praying and as long as I'm working I see that it's going to be like that my goal is to be able we have our our um Weekend of Giving, and that's we have our ten, t sh ten Shoes and Tutus Gala, our Celebrity Basketball Game, the Authors versus Actors, and our Day Conference. And we bring in all the girls around the country in, and they get to meet each other and fellowship with each other in Atlanta for the weekend. And that weekend, I can see it being like an Essence Festival with just kids because we have performers. We have all that for the regular conferences. So I want to be able to do that, have major speakers on a major platform, um, just a full festival. 
And that's my ultimate goal of why I'm trying to have girls who branch go. And I see it happening. I see it. That is wonderful. And I definitely could see this as big as a Girl Scouts of America. I could, I can see it. So as we wrap up, mm -hmm. we're in this situation. It is unprecedented. And let's just be honest, it's ridiculous. None of this right. makes any sense. It's like the worst sci-fi horror movie you could ever put together, right? So all sorts of things are coming out of this and we're seeing all of the problems. So someone comes to you, they see a specific problem that they want to solve. If you could give them one piece of advice, what would you tell them about turning their mission into a movement? The only way that we can expect change is if we in turn become the change maker. From day one, every, my in my mission statement, it says, um, thank you for being a difference maker in your community. And that's all it takes is one difference maker. So if we have an army of difference makers, like what would this world be? So if one, if you came to me and was like, Nikki, Nicola, Nick, whatever you want to call me, <laughs> I want to do something. My thing is like, Nike, just do it. I don't care what your budget is. You know, people overanalyze things. I didn't have a budget. I'm serious. I had no budget, none, none. But every kid eats. We have enough food, we have enough gift bags with hygiene products and things. We get donations. We get people that just love on us, you know? So people just need a leader. Everyone is not been, meant to lead. They were not built to lead. But if people see you lead, you're gonna, and you're doing it the right way and righteously, you're gonna get people that's going to help assist and follow. I love that. I love that so much. So before we go, please tell us how we can support you with your business, with the Girls Who Brunch tour, and anything else that you're working on. So uh, with Girls Who Brunch, you can support us by going to Girls Who Brunch Tour, spelled out, dot com. On the very top, there's a link that says donate today. No donation is too small. When you click there, it'll tell you $10 will donate a bag. $100 will donate 10 girls to attend an event, you know? Uh, at the bottom of that front, that same page, it says, be involved. If you wanna be a speaker, you can sign up right there. If you want your daughter to be an ambassador, you can sign up right there. The, the biggest thing that I just ask is just be involved. Um, with me, you can find me at Nicola, I am Nicola.com. And I perform literary services. Um, I help publish books successfully. I speak in regards to um, how to publish successfully, how to uh, blog your business, um, just whatever different topics in regards to media, social media, books, uh, philanthropy. I do speak on that. You can follow me at MZ underscore Nicola, and that's N-I-C-O-L-A on Instagram. And on um, Instagram and Facebook, it's just Girls Who Brunch Tour. Thank you so much for being here and talking with us about what you do and Girls Who Brunch Tour. That is an amazing, amazing movement. So we are out of time. Thank you for joining us for this session on the Soka Mom Summit. I hope that you have enjoyed all of the sessions so far. We have more to come, so stay with us. And make sure you go to SokaMomSummit.com look at this session and you can find out all about girls who brunch tour you can find out all about nicola and everything that she's doing it's pretty amazing okay we couldn't even get it all in 30 minutes but <laughs> it's pretty amazing okay so i'll see you later and nicola thank you again thank you bye. queen bye